Today, the former CEO of Abercrombie and Fitch and two associates are under arrest for allegedly running an international sex trafficking and prostitution scheme. According to a new federal indictment, former Abercrombie boss Mike Jeffries and his alleged co-conspirators interviewed and hired men for so-called sex parties fueled by alcohol, drugs, and Viagra. And authorities say many of the victims were prospective male models looking for work in the fashion industry. CNN National Correspondent Bryn Gingrass is following this story. Bryn, what more are prosecutors alleging here? Yeah, Boris, one of those co-defendants is actually also Jeffrey's romantic partner, also arrested this morning along with Jeffrey's and a third person who is described by prosecutors as sort of a middleman with this whole entire operation. Let me detail a little bit more of what prosecutors say happened here. They're saying in about a seven-year period, part of that time, Jeffrey's was the current CEO of Abercrombie and Fitch, and prosecutors say he was using his power, his wealth, to basically find men who wanted to be models and essentially have them try out in sexual ways to come to what is being described as sex events. And those sex events would happen in hotel rooms. Uh, they'd happen at houses that Jeffries owned all across uh, the world, really. And at those events, they were sex fueled events where their prosecutors are saying these prospective models would be given drugs, they'd be given alcohol, Viagra, muscle relaxers to perform sex acts on Jeffries and his romantic partner. I want you to hear more from the prosecutors who laid out this 16 uh, count indictment earlier this afternoon. On more than one occasion, Jeffries and Smith either directed others to inject or personally injected men with an erection inducing substance for the purpose of causing the men to engage in sex acts the men were incapable of engaging in or unwilling to engage in. Pretty horrific allegations here. All three men were arrested out of, not in New York, but they're going to be brought to New York to be in federal court sometime later this week or possibly the beginning of next week, guys. And this investigation, Bryn, was prompted by a BBC documentary. Yeah, so that documentary came out last year, and there were several, really dozens of men who came forward to uh, this reporter with the BBC about these allegations. And since that came out, a federal investigation started, Abercrombie and Fitch started its own investigation. And really this, if you can remember at the time, Abercrombie and Fitch really soared in the early 2000s. Uh, and they were hitting, you know, a, a big, uh, you know, they basically were on a big stride until all these allegations came forward when Jeffries was at the helm of the company. It's important to note that Abercrombie and Fitch certainly has changed its image since then. They have hired new management. They have hired, um, you know, different, they have different inclusion practices inside their company. But certainly this is another hit for the company that has been taken several over the last few years, guys. Bryn Gingrass, thank you so much for the update. Joining us now to discuss is defense and trial attorney Misty Harris. Misty, what do you make of the charges that these three men are facing now? Well, what we're seeing in this indictment looks to be a pretty sophisticated sex trafficking ring as per the prosecutors. Not only do you have three co-conspirators who are indicted, but there's also allegations relating to a network of individuals, employees, contractors, security professionals, who are all involved in the recruitment and ultimately facilitating the acts that underlie the allegations in the indictment. So my guess would be that there's, we know that there's 15 uh, people who are involved relating to the allegations of the indictment. But the question is, do you have some cooperating witnesses who may have been involved more tangentially, not masterminds, who may be assisting with the feds, maybe having non-prosecution agreements? That's something to look for as this case proceeds. And Misty, the accusers here were under the impression that Jeffries would help their careers. Uh, how is that going to factor into the defense? Well, keep in mind that the prosecutors have to prove for the sex trafficking charges that there was the uh, recruitment and solicitation of individuals through force, fraud, or coercion to engage in a sex act. So that's the standard for prosecutors. So that element of force, fraud, and coercion is something that's going to be the prosecutor's burden to prove. Now, of course, when it comes to the defense, they're going to look at each one of these individuals, the specific allegations relating to them, and try and potentially make arguments that some people may have been engaging in, in these acts willfully. And so that's where you see the prosecutors in the indictment 
setting out that there were other substances involved, that there were other issues that would make them unable to consent to these sexual acts. But the defense uses that in a different way to say, this might not be a sex trafficking ring. It might be a case of state sexual assault. And that's how they're going to try and detract from those allegations. Uh, Misty, some accusers filed a civil lawsuit against the company itself. I'm wondering if you think these federal charges could bolster their claims. Well, we see a similar pattern here with another case we're covering frequently where there's many civil cases uh, and ultimately there was an indictment. Of course, I'm talking about the Diddy case. But the timing here, not only do you have this BBC expose where you have a whole group of people coming forward alleging that they had been a victim of this conduct and of this sex ring. There's also that class action civil lawsuit. So the standard of proof in a civil case is much different than what is in a criminal case. It's preponderance of the evidence versus beyond a reasonable doubt. Criminal standard much higher. That being said, a lot of what's in that civil complaint is reflected in the allegations in this criminal indictment. So there's most certainly overlap between the two. And from the perspective of both the prosecution and defense, you don't look at this case in the vacuum. You're going to be looking at those allegations uh, in, in accordance with this new criminal case. All right, Misty Maris, uh, very interesting here. Thank you.